Okie dokie. Today we're going to be uh, evaluating complex residues of uh, functions. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do first is do the residues of what's called the Laurent series. Um, uh, we will need to write a complex function as a series. So let's take a look at this complex function um, right over here. Uh, we have e to the z, uh, z minus 1. Um, what we can do is uh, uh, pull out an e to the z, uh, uh, I'm sorry, an e out of this function. Uh, so algebraically, of course, this is equal to this. And uh, now that we have that, um, we can leave this alone, which I did right here, just left him alone. And then we'll expand this as a series right here. So e to something, of course, is something to the 0 power divided by 0 factorial plus something to the first power over 1 factorial plus uh, something to the uh, squared uh, to the 2 factorial and so on dot dot dot. So we expanded uh, e to the z minus 1 uh, as a series here. Um, once we do that, uh, what we can do is we can evaluate the, um, the, uh, the residue by noting that, that, that the residue is always the coefficient of the uh, z minus z naught to the first power. Now, uh, uh, this is z to the 0, so it'll be 1. So this times this will be z minus 1 to the, um, uh, actually, to the first power, because this will be 1, and so that will be all that it is. Uh, this times this will be uh, z minus 1 to the 1, z minus 1 to the 1 on the bottom will be z minus 1 to the 0. Uh, so that so that this we will not take the coefficient of this uh, and this times this will uh, be z minus I'm sorry <laughs> of course uh, z minus 1 squared over z minus 1 to the first power on the bottom that'll give you z minus 1 to the first power on top and that's not uh, this term so it, we can see that this term only occurs here uh, it doesn't occur here, here, or in any of the infinite other terms that are here. So we'll need to know what is the coefficient of uh, this times this uh, here. And the coefficient, this will be uh, z minus 1 to the 0 is uh, 1. 0 factorial is 1. Uh, we have the z minus 1, uh, where z naught is 1. And so the only coefficient of this is uh, e, and therefore... Uh, the residue of this function is equal to uh, uh, the the uh, uh, is equal to e right here, and that's the residue at z uh, uh, z equals uh, one. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at residues of simple poles. Um, we're going to do this function again, but in a different way. Um, uh, e to the z over z minus 1 has a simple pole z naught equals 1 because, of course, 1 causes a, uh, a problem in this, uh, is discontinuous in this thing. So the simple pole z naught is equal to 1. Uh, here we go. Um, uh, the, the, if you want to know the residue of a simple pole um, at z naught of f of z, uh, multiply it times z minus z naught, the function, whatever function you have, multiply it by z minus z naught, and then, uh, and then uh, after you multiply it, uh, take the limit as z goes to z naught. So let's do that for this uh, function. Um, what is the residue of a simple pole at z naught equals 1? Well, we'll take this function, that's sitting right here, and we'll multiply it by z minus a 1. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. Uh, this coefficient must be 1 right here. Uh, you cannot have anything but a 1 for the coefficient of uh, when you multiply uh, uh, this uh, times uh, this function. This must be 1. Um, and it is 1, and so everything is okay. Uh, so take this function, there he is, and multiply by z minus z naught. Z naught is 1. We determined that at the very beginning. And of course, uh, algebraically, these two will cancel. And then take the limit as z goes to z naught, which is 1. So stick in 1 uh, into here. And of course, we'll get e to the 1, which is e, which mans matches the answer that we had uh, over here. So we did this different than we did uh, using a uh, Laurent series, okay? 
Alrighty, let's take a look at uh, this function right here. Now we'll do a different one. And uh, we notice that this function um, has two simple poles, uh, one at z equals negative two-thirds. I uh, wrote that here. That's one of our uh, things. We can call that z naught if you like. And call this z1. Uh, the other, uh, the other uh, uh, pole is over here. Uh, these are simple poles because they have uh, powers of 1. Uh, now, that z equals 7 will cause trouble there. And so we say uh, z1 equals uh, 7. Okay, so what we want to do is figure out the residue of the function. Figure out the residue of the function at uh, the... We'll do the z equals 7, z, this one first. Doesn't matter. We could do this one or this one. I'm just going to do this 7, 1. Uh, that's multiply through by z uh, minus 7. Multiply by z minus 7, the function. Uh, so, uh, here is our function. We multiply by z minus 7. And um, after you multiply by z minus 7, after we multiply by z minus 7, uh, the, the, this, remember the coefficient has to be 1, so this will cancel to this to give you a negative 1, of course. And then we'll plug in 7 into the z right here. We'll take the limit as uh, z goes to 7. And uh, sorry. And when we plug a 7 in here and a 7 in here, we'll get a 7 over 23 uh, with a negative because this cancels to this uh, right there. All right. Let's take a look at, uh, now we'll do the negative two-thirds, a little just a little bit more complicated with the, the, the fraction. But we'll do the same thing, we'll multiply by one. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, when we do this one, notice we have to have a coefficient of one, so we will, um, we will uh, multiply through, uh, uh, we will, uh, well, we'll multiply by uh, what we said, z plus uh, two-thirds, because it's z minus a negative two-thirds, so it's z plus two-thirds, but you have to have a one. So this still will make this a pole uh, at negative uh, two-thirds, but we cannot put multiply by three z plus two, because our coefficient has to be one. Now, when you cancel this with this, of course you'll pull a three out, and so you'll have the three right there. So this will cancel with this to give you a three. And then we'll plug in negative two-thirds in here. And we'll plug negative two-thirds into here. And we'll get this, uh, which after a little bit of math you can get is negative uh, two over 69. Okay? Okie dokie. Um, let's now do the residues of simple poles using L'Hopital's rule. Um, so this is a new method uh, to do it. And um, what we have is a rule. I'm going to state the rule here first. And the rule is that if you want to do the residue of g of z over h of z at z naught, uh, it's equal to g of z naught over the derivative h prime of z, uh, and uh, evaluated z naught. Uh, this is if uh, g of z naught does not equal zero, which would just make this the residue equal to zero. Um, uh, and uh, h of z naught can't be zero uh, right here. I'm sorry, h h of z naught is equal to zero, so uh, z naught would be whatever makes uh, h of z equal to zero, but the derivative can't equal zero, all right? Otherwise, we'd have a, a kind of a goofy answer for our residue at z naught. So let's take a look at, um, actually, we're going to do this problem over again, uh, but we're going to do it with the uh, L'Hopital's rule. So how do we do this problem uh, like with this. Well, we'll have to make this look like a fraction with a function on top and a function on bottom. Well, this can be rewritten as z over 3z plus 2 over z minus uh, uh, 7 minus z here. So this function is the same as this function. So here's our uh, top function. Here's our bottom function right here. And we say that we want the residue of this well, the residue of this is equal to leave the uh, leave the top function alone, which I did right here, 
and uh, take the derivative of the bottom function. Uh, the derivative of the bottom function is negative 1, of course. And if we leave the top function alone, uh, and then we plug in uh, 7, a 7 and a 7, so we'll get 7, and 7 will be a 21 plus 2 is 23. So we leave the top function alone, plug in 7, and we take the derivative of the bottom function and plug in 7. Of course, when you plug 7 into negative 1, you still get negative 1. So negative uh, 7 over 23, which is the same answer we got right here. So this proves that this method gives us the same answer as this method. Um, now, uh, we're going to do this this one with L'Hopital's rule and figure out the other residue um, uh, at um, z. We had another uh, pole at z equals negative uh, two-thirds here. I'm sorry, that's a two-thirds. Thirds. That's a three there. So how do we rewrite this function? Well, we can. this function can be rewritten as uh, z over seven minus z all over uh, 3z plus 2. So this can be written like this. This will be our top function. This will be our bottom function. So how do we use L'Hopital's rule? We leave the top function alone. Don't do anything with the top function. And then we'll take the derivative of the bottom function. So the derivative of this, of course, is 3. And if you leave this function alone, we'll get this. And then we'll need to plug in negative 2 thirds into here and negative 2 thirds into here. So negative two-thirds into here, negative two-thirds into here. So this function stayed the same. This function, we took the derivative, just like somebody, uh, L'Hopital, told us to do. And so uh, if we do a little bit of math on this, we'll get negative 2 over 69, which, of course, is the same answer we got here. So L'Hopital gives us the same answer uh, that, uh, that the other. Both methods give us the same answer. Okay, okay. Now we're going to try to do um, uh, residues of uh, multiple poles, uh, multiple poles, and that's when the power on the bottom is not equal to one, but is equal. Well, it can be equal to one. You can st you still use this formula, uh, but uh, suppose it's a power of two, uh, three, four, fifty-five, uh, any any other uh, uh, higher powers. Um, then we'll have to use this formula. I thought I could sneak it in here, but I couldn't, so I. I rewrote it for you here so you can see it a little bit better. So if you ever want to find the residue of f of z at some z naught, uh, and that equals some function divided by z minus z naught to some power, uh, the residue of this will be equal to uh, 1 over m minus 1 factorial, where m is the power of the uh, bottom term here. Uh, times the derivative, uh, I'm sorry, you'll have to multiply by z minus z naught to the m, so that's this term right here, we'll have to multiply by this, uh, the function by this, and then we'll have to take the derivative of this, um, m minus 1 uh, times, uh, so this number minus 1 times, we'll have to take the derivative of this, uh, what we get here. So I know that seems might seem a little bit confusing. Let's see how we use uh, this uh, method here. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to write an algorithm for this. And so um, we're going to start inside. We'll multiply first by z minus z naught to the m. We'll, do, we'll first multiply. Then we'll take m minus 1 derivatives of this. And then we'll divide by m minus 1 factorial. And then at the end, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, we need to plug in uh, I had an evaluation here at z equals a z naught right here. So we need to evaluate all of this at z equals z naught. Uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you that. But uh, it, luckily it's in my algorithm right here. You'll have to plug in z minus z naught. So this is our algorithm. We're going to do it twice here. So let's do it uh, for this function first. Okay, dokie. So here's our function. Uh, notice that um, it's e to the 2z uh, divided by z cubed. So that power is not equal to 1. So we can't use our methods that we had before. We could use those methods for z uh, to a power of 1. But when it's 3, you can't use those other methods. You have to use this method. So the first thing we'll do, uh, first of all, we'll notice that z naught 
the thing that makes uh, that makes this con discontinuous is zero, of course. Uh, zero cubed in the bottom will cause a problem. Um, so uh, we will need to multiply by z minus z naught to the m. Uh, z naught will be zero, and m will be three, of course, because the power is three. So we'll have to multiply this function by z minus z naught to the cubed. And when you multiply this uh, times this, uh, you'll get um, uh, e to the 2 uh, z, right here. Next, we'll take m minus 1 derivatives of this function right here. But m is 3. Remember, m is 3 right here. So we'll have to take 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 derivatives of this. Uh, 2 derivatives of e to the 2 z is 4 e to the 2 z, of course. So we've done that step. Uh, the next thing we'll have to do is divide by m minus 1 uh, factorial. So m minus 1 is 3 minus 10, so divide by 2 factorial. And this, this, divide by 2 factorial, is equal to 2 e to the 2z. And the last thing we'll have to do is plug in a z naught, which in this case, as z naught was equal to 0, if you remember. So stick in 0 into the z, and we'll get a e to the 0 is, is 1, a 1 times 2 is 2. So the residue of this at z equals 0 is equal to 2. Okay, let's try to do this again. I know that might have seemed confusing, so we're going to do another one here. Uh, we'll try this function here. Notice that we have a pi minus z uh, cubed. This will show you why you have to multiply, by the way. A lot of people say, ah, I don't want to, I want to skip this step. I'm just going to take the top function. That's very dangerous to do, and I'll show you why in this example. You will get the wrong answer sometimes. Uh, okay, so here's our function right here. And the first thing we have to do is multiply this function by uh, not pi minus z cubed. We need to do z minus z naught. And by the way, of course, z naught is equal to pi. That's what causes the bottom to be 0. And so uh, z naught is pi. So we'll have to multiply not by pi minus z cubed, but z minus pi cubed. And that makes all the difference here. When you multiply this times the function, uh, you don't just get the top function cosine z, because, of course, this will cancel to give you a negative 1, of course, uh, if we uh, take a negative 1 out of that, okay, or a negative 1 out of this. So this times a function is not just the top function, so be very careful that you always obey this rule right here. So this times the function, z minus z naught to the 3, uh, times the function is equal to negative cosine of z. Um, next, we'll um, take m minus 1 uh, derivatives of this. Uh, m here, of course, is 3, of course. So 3 minus 1, again, is 2 derivatives of this. And uh, 2 derivatives, 3 minus 1, 2 derivatives. Uh, take m minus 1 derivatives. Um, uh, 2 derivatives of negative cosine well, one derivative will give you positive sine, and another der a derivative of sine will give you a positive cosine, okay? So two derivatives of negative cosine is a positive cosine, okay? Now we'll need to divide by, uh, we'll divide by um, m minus 1 factorial. So uh, take cosine of z and divide by m minus 1, 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, so divide by 2 factorial. And, uh, of course, that's just cosine z divided by 2. And then finally, we'll evaluate it at uh, our z naught value, which from the beginning we noticed that z naught was uh, whatever caused a discontinuity in the bottom, uh, which is, of course, uh, or uh, discontinuity in the function, which, of course, was pi. So z naught was pi. So we need to evaluate this at pi. And so we'll take pi and stuck it into z. Cosine of pi is negative 1. And 2 is 2 right there. Okay? Okie dokie. And uh, I believe that's it for this lecture. Uh, 20 minutes. So it was a long one. All right. Hope you enjoyed this lecture. Look forward to any comments at the bottom. Thank you very much.